Okay. So now continuing on with chapter one, we're going to talk about how business activities, what are they, and how do we determine our operations, okay? So after you establish your business, right, you need to figure out what kind of business are you, okay? And that's three types of business activities, right? Number one is do you provide a service, okay? Number two is do you um, provide products? So are you merchandising, okay? And then last but not least, do you create your products? Therefore, manufacturing, all right? Now, um, let's go ahead and talk about each and every single one of them, okay? First, services, right, as we know, is where you provide a customer um, a service. So usually these services are based on, you know, uh, some kind of labor. It's usually timed, okay? So a good example would be um, a telephone service, right? You pay for your minutes on your phone and the service gets provided, okay? Other things could be an accounting, uh, uh, an accounting, right? A law firm, anything, it's something that does consulting. That's going to be based on an hour rate, okay? A lot of psychiatrists, right? They get paid by the hour based on the service that they provide, which is to sit there and listen to you for a whole hour, okay? That is a service. Okay? No products are included. You're not purchasing a product itself. Like, there's no tangible product that you're actually getting. It's, uh, it's more of a lines of a service that someone either invests their own time to provide the service for you. Okay? And then, okay, so then the second type of um, activity is going to be Merchandising, which is going to be a common one, right? We have two types of uh, merchandising, right? Whether we are a retail store or we are a wholesaler, okay? So again, retail, pretty straightforward, where you sell goods to your customers, right? To the public, right? So great example is going to be anything that pretty much sells a product. So a clothing store, a grocery store, okay? Um... A, you know, a dealership, right? You sell cars. So in this case, it, this is pretty much majority of a lot of companies out there that sell a product, okay? Maybe they, they provide a meal for you, all right? That's going to be you buying a product, okay? Great example for a retail, like we mentioned before, is a grocery store, a clothing store, okay? Now, the difference between a retail store versus a wholesaler is that the retailer, they are the ones that are selling to the general public. They're the ones that, that open their doors and sell to any individual. Okay? And then a wholesaler sells to the retail stores. So they are, they're not, they can provide um, products to the public, but really, most cases for wholesalers is they usually are the provider. They're the they're the ones that you t generally go to to buy in bulk, or they sell goods and, and services to retail stores to sell out to the public. Okay, so great example is Costco, right? They sell in bulk, right? For whether it's a company that's that retails and markets them individually. Or it could be for an overall, um, you know, for the public as well, okay? So that's the difference between a wholesaler versus a retailer. In this class, this is exactly what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at purchasing items from a vendor and where our sole purpose is to sell the product out to our customers. So we are focusing on a merchandising type of company, okay? Last but not least, we have a manufacturing company where we actually create our own product and then we either sell it to a wholesale, retail, or whoever it is that we sell to. We make the product. We generate the product. So again, a dealership not only sells to the, pro to the customers, they're the ones that also create the cars themselves. 
Obviously, the building is not going to be in the same vicinity, but the idea is that they are this kind type of company makes the product on a larger scale. They're the one that manufactures or produces the products and sells it out to the wholesalers or the retailers. Okay, so once again, a good example, like I mentioned before, is a car dealership. Not only do they sell the cars, but they make the cars themselves. Okay. So once again, we are focusing on primarily in this class, a merchandising type of company because we're going to take a look at how we sell the product, how do we purchase the inventory, and how do we take that product, convert it into um, a good and, and sell it so we can make a profit. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about accounting. Well, what is the definition of accounting? Pretty straightforward, right? It is the process or a, um, in this case, it's a systematic process of analyzing, recording, um, summarizing, reporting, um, and revising, reviewing, as well as interpreting financial information, okay? So in this case, an easier way to understand it is it's going to be answering these four questions, right? What happened? When did it happen? Why did it happen? And how did it happen? Okay, so again, accounting is going to analyze a business transaction, right? And how do we interpret a business transaction is any transaction that affects the overall outcome of a business. So for example, if I'm purchasing inventory, right? That answers what? What did I do? I'm purchasing inventory so I can sell out to my customers. When did it happen would be the date that I purchased the items for. Why did it happen? Okay, so the why and the what are kind of similar because I'm selling a product. I need to purchase them. How? How did I pay for it? Okay, so again, that is what accounting does. It, it takes a business transaction or a fi something that has to do with financial information. It converts and answers these questions, and it, it tells us exactly how to record it. Okay. So once again, that is the definition of accounting. Now, what is financial information um, going to be used for? All right. So again, it is it could be used for two different types of people, right? Your internal users and your external users. Now, the primary reason for creating financial statements or producing or analyzing these financial information is to ultimately tell your internal users, which are anybody that are involved in the company, right? If you run a profit and loss, that's going to tell your company, right? What we are doing good, right? What costs have we done in order to generate the revenue that we made, right? Um, what materials um, did we have to go ahead and purchase, right? Our internal users are going to be the people that are involved with the company, right? What executive decisions did we make to make sure that our profit margins stay exactly where we are so we're continuously making a profit? Again, that's what the, uh, financial information can help internal users such as your sales representative, your profit managers, right? Anybody, anybody that works for the company, it will help them make projections or make predictions to go ahead and continue the next accounting cycle to either better your profit margins or, um, you know, lessen your costs, okay? Now, for your external users are going to be anybody that are outside your company, now, if we're looking in terms of a sole proprietor, right, your external users are going to be the people who, um, you know, invest into your company. So any potential um, investors, any bank people, right, that could, you know, provide you um, a bank loan, right, for a business, right, those are going to be your external users. The financial information, if you do a profitability test, right, or profitability statement, you can prove to the business or to the bank saying that, hey, if you let me borrow money, 
right here, my profit tells me that I'm making a lot of extra money. I'd be able to pay you back if you let me borrow a lump sum money so I can use that money to either expand my business. And if I expand my business, that means more money. So again, that is a good use for the external users. Now we're going to talk about the bookkeeper versus the accountant. So um, the bookkeeper, there to sum it up in really easy terms, is that their one and only job is to record a business transaction. Okay, that's it. That's the only bookkeeper's job is to just to record a business transaction. Okay, whereas the accountant. They're the ones that get to make those rules to tell the bookkeeper how to journalize. They're the one that takes control of and creating the chart of accounts, which the bookkeeper needs to use in order to record a transaction. But the accountant also gets to produce the financial statements. They get to make projections. They get to do a lot more than what the bookkeeper can do. And here's the catch here. The accountant can also do the bookkeeper's job. They can record a business transaction, all right? So in this terms, right, the accountant does the bookkeeping and more while the bookkeeper strictly only records the, the transactions at hand for a business, okay? That's the fine difference between the two. Now, in this class, not only am I going to teach you how to bookkeep, I'm going to teach you to become the accountant because when you're going into the job field, right, you want to make your resume, make, make it look better by saying, hey, not only can I do bookkeeping, I can also be the accountant, okay? The accountant does way more than a bookkeeper. The accountant can do the bookkeeper's job, but the bookkeeper cannot do the accountant's job. Because the only responsibility that the bookkeeper can do is just strictly record business transactions. Okay? Any questions there? No. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about the different types of accounting. All right? And we're going to talk about the different areas that these different types of accountings can um, expand to, all right? The different five areas is going to be number one, public accounting, which is also known for CPA, right? Certified public accounting. You do need to acquire a CPA license in order to do any public accounting, okay? Number two, is private accounting. Number three, government accounting. Number four, non-profit accounting. And then five, last but not least, international accounting. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and view each area of accounting. So, public accounting. All right, once again, you need to pursue a CPA license in order for you to be able to come anywhere near a public accounting job. Now, what is a public accounting job? It is where you do accounting for publicly traded companies, aka corporations, okay? Corporations are public traded companies, okay? They're the ones who are the big, the big, the, the, that pay the big bucks, okay? This one, you need to have a certified license to be able to do public accounting because not only are you doing accounting at a grand scale, it's also going to, you need to be a very, you need to be very, very careful and very, you know, very strict on your accounting because you need to be a master of it because you are being watched and being um, boggled down by the government. The government is going to keep a good eye on the accounting record. So if you are recording books for a publicly traded company, right, you need to make sure 
that you are doing the counting correctly, okay? Which is why they want you to certify in public accounting. Again, certification for public accounting if you are interested in it. Um, there's a lot of fields that you can do. As you can see here, the list of fields go on and on on what you can do for a public certifi certified public accounting um, license. Okay. Now, um, the test is broken up to four different tests, which um, tests you um, the taxes. It tests you on um, ethics and um, also uh, a few of the uh, generally accepted accounting principles. What are the rules and guidelines in order for you to uh, you know, correctly record a transaction for a publicly traded company? So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, again, the, the sort of the, um, certified public accounting uh, license, again, it's broken up to four different exams, and they are very difficult because, again, you need to be a master because you're not, you're going to be going through the IRS with this. You have to be perfect or close to perfect. You can't make that many mistakes if you're going to go into a public accounting. Okay. Now, what are the jobs that you can do if you do pursue a CPA license and what jobs are available? So obviously, number one is going to be auditing accounting. So just like regular accounting, right? You need to have someone that's able to go through every single business transaction that a corporation does and make sure that everything pans out through all the transactions have been recorded correctly and so on and so forth, that there isn't missing money anywhere, okay? Second one is going to be one of the biggest portions of public accounting, which is taxation, okay? Tax accountants, this is where many corporations pay the big bucks to help the corporation file their taxes. Now think about it. If a corporation has a billion transactions a day, over a hundred shops all over the United States, and each shop having anywhere from a million transactions a day, how extensive do you think this job is can be if they have to file taxes properly following the rules and guidelines under the IRS, properly filing those taxes, how labor-intensive do you think this job can be? And this is exactly why major company, companies will pay the big boys, which is the, known as the um, four big accounting firms, the four publicly traded accounting firms that exist out there, right? We got Deloitte, we got Ernst & Young, I don't think Price uh, Co Water Cooper is um, in, in existent anymore, but it used to be one of the big four. I don't even know what it is now, um, but they're the big, big major um, CPA licensed publicly traded um, accounting firms out there that strictly does tax accounting. Okay, because again, they are going to be the big people that pay a lot of money to file taxes for the company, okay? Now, not only do they do that, they do, do release a quarterly statement. So every, every three months, they'll release a report out, and usually that kind of helps it a lot more easier instead of waiting for the end of the year to calculate all of that work. So again, these public-traded uh, companies they're going to be, um, you know, if you pursue a CPA, usually you'll be under auditing or taxation, okay? Now, a fun one is going to be forensics accounting. Now, this one is awesome because this one, it kind of goes with the government too. What they do is they investigate the company to try to see if, this, co this corporation is doing any funny businesses. So their, their job to do here is to invest in, investigate the company to prevent any fraudulent um, measures. So 
Um, they're going to be investigating to see to find any red flags or trying to find any spots where the company is trying to hide a transaction. Um, so once again, um, if we're looking at a billion dollar company, what is $10 to a billion dollar company? That's chump change, right? That could easily be swept under the rug. And what the job of the forensic accountants is that they go and investigate where that $10 went, okay? That is going to be, you do need a certified um, um, certified public accounting license because, once again, you need to be able to read a corporation's um, financial statements. You need to be able to view how a corporation does their books okay and be, and you need to have that license to understand what the ethics can go and morals that can go into creating these financial statements right you can see where a business can go corrupt or whether they really did truly buy the books on how they recorded their transactions so once again this is one of the fun classes that i took um, um for my bachelor's degree we got to investigate um, on our own company. This is where we got to take a look at Enron. Um, Enron was a major uh, company that frauded not only the government, but they frauded their, um, their customers. They scammed them by raising prices. And, you know, because they had the ability to turn on and turn off the uh, electricity, right, they could turn it all the way up to have a blackout which then, you know, causes um, individuals to want to upgrade to a better plan. You know, they, they scam their customers. And um, we investigated um, into their uh, books and why they cooked the books, okay? Why they um, paid Arthur Anderson, which used to be a huge, um, a huge, one of the big four huge accounting firms that helped um, Enron prepare their financial statements to make it look like they're not doing anything wrong. And they just submit that to the IRS and the IRS didn't know any better and processed the paperwork exactly the way it looks. So that's what fi uh, forensics does. It, it allows you to investigate because once again, corporations, right? They are a tricky type of business. You need to be a, a professional in order for you to have the capability to go through public accounting, okay? Because there's a lot of things where ethics come into play where corporations, they will fraud you. Whether they fraud you through, um, through you know, selling something to you or will they fraud you by selling packages to you and they take that money for themselves, okay? So once again... These are the options that you can do under um, public accounting, right? Okay. Private accounting. This is where we fall under the category because private accounting is more for smaller owned businesses, okay? Smaller business meaning sole proprietors, partnerships, LLCs, okay? Um, we fall under this category, right? Because we're not in a public traded com organization, right? We are doing accounting on a smaller scale, right? Our transactions are nowhere near a corporation's transactions, okay? Like the maximum that you can have is maybe 200 or 300 transactions per day for a small business, okay? Where a corporation, like I've mentioned before, because they have so many stores and so many, you know, locations and, um, you know, they can have billions of transactions that can happen per day. This is looking at accounting at a very small scale. So for private accounting, we have the same things that a public accounting can have, right? You do have taxes. You do have auditing, okay? So again, taxes for the smaller business. Right? Everybody needs a tax accountant when you do business, okay, to properly file all your taxes to the IRS. Auditing, 
for any reason that you want to make sure that a company is properly filing or properly recording their transactions, okay? Financial accounting is where we fall under because this is the very backbone or the very basics of accounting is to collect, record, analyze, and interpret our financial data, okay? This is where we prepare our financial statements. So again, we're, this is us just making sure that as we are running our business, that we are following the guidelines of, are we making a profit, okay? So you do, that's what financial accounting does, okay? Now, if you go into, uh, if you are interested in accounting and you want to pursue maybe a CPA or, you know, just try to get yourself an accounting degree, you will need to go through all the rest of these courses, such as managerial accounting, okay? Managerial accounting is more for so for called cost accounting. This is for, um, you know, organizations that are more for manufacturing, okay? Where you're trying to produce a product, okay? In this case, we do the same concepts in um, financial accounting, except this one, we're calculating how much it's going to cost me to produce a product, right? What benefit can I get to try to make my cost as low as possible, but at the same time, um, you know, be able to benefit by marking my prices up for a finished product. So in this case, managerial accounting is going to help you calculate whether it's internal costs, such as labor cost, right, that goes into your product, um, as well as the cost of material, raw materials, okay, to be able to produce the product, okay? Um, under that is going to be that you have budget, budgetary accounting, right? So every business, when you start, before starting your business, you need to set some kind of budget for the year so you know what your limitations on what your costs are going to be and what your limitations on how much expenses you can incur for that year, okay? So you're able to, um, you know, always make a profit at the end of a given accounting period, okay? And green accounting, once again, that's for um, the um, initiative to be more environmental friendly, okay? Um, other ones could be treasury accounting. These are your typical bank people. So any bank tellers or anybody that try to sell um, bank bonds to you or bank, uh, you know, loans, that's going to be treasury accounting, okay? Where you're accounting money and making sure that your inputs and your outputs are equal, okay? And then last but not least, financial planning, um, which um, allows you to be able to determine your return on investment so again this is more for investing activities so if you're planning to invest in a company what is your output and what is your return are you able to return that money back quickly or are you going to be you know slowly making that return back so again return on investments okay so once again this Right here, all of these are more at advanced level of accounting. Your financial accounting is where we're going to start because you need to be able to understand how does a business transaction even flow? How does it even work? How does the accounting equation work? So in this case, we're going to start from square one, which is the basics of accounting, the fundamentals of accounting, which is financial accounting. Understanding how a business transaction even affects a company and be able to produce those financial statements to make sense of how a business is running. How is it operating? Okay. Every other things are more advanced level of accounting. Okay. Any questions so far? No. So government accounting, okay? Once again, government accounting is for government agencies. So anything that is federally funded or even state funded that is government owned, 
okay, or a government organization, agency if you want to call them, they also require some kind of profession because their rules definitely apply differently than an actual non or an actual prof for profit organization, right? You you know, obviously government accounting is gonna have their own rules and guidelines because they are primarily focused on being funded for providing either a good or service and they're being funded by the government, okay, whether it's federal or state. So most cases, you're going to have either some kind of um, resource management, accounting, or even some agency funding or even some kind of budgetary funding, okay? Because it, for you guys, right, who are being funded by a government agency, right, you're being, um, govern you're being funded by not only federal, but you're also being governed, um, I mean, funded by the state, a portion of it, the money is from the state to help you get training for these these uh, resources and training to help you get a job, okay? So those kind of things, right? You need to have some of those, of those accounting to help you budget. How many individuals can we provide training for? How much does an individual get? Every year, because the amount of money that the, each organization gets, because whether it's a federal... Um, funded or state funded, they need to break down because every year, not every year, right? Especially this year, you can definitely tell that everything that's being government funded is going to be cut down because due to the pandemic, right? We had to push more money into the system to provide for just the society to be able to pick up its pieces and, you know, continue um, it, and making sure that the economics doesn't fall down, Right? Because we live in that kind of society where money flows in our company, right? So a lot of these programs are going to be cut for funding for sure because a lot of people are unemployed. So the money for training is going to probably be cut most likely because we're paying people to, uh, it's because they're on, a, on a res, res, excuse me, they're, receiving unemployment money so therefore the money that they're being budgeted for right it's definitely changed now right they don't have money for the resources for training anymore they have money for paying the people that are unemployed so again those examples are going to be needed people for this type of government agencies okay they need people to be able to manage either budgetary um, or just resources or even developing um you know developing a project okay then we talked about non-for-profit so once again non-profit organizations get special taxes okay and those special taxes right you need those type of people to be able to handle or to be able to process these ones for them so again, you do have budgeting accounting because again, if nonprofit organizations, the way that they earn their money or the way that they are funded, whether it's through membership dues or whether um, they have fundraisers, they need to plan and be able to budget themselves to be able to have enough money to fund specific events or you know hold specific um um, you know, if it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they need to make sure they have enough money to host an event. So again, budgetary accounting is definitely going to be one of them. Um, and uh, for sure, funds management. So making sure that they have enough money to be able to, to pull off a specific idea here. Okay. And then last but not least, international accounting. So in Chapter 4, we will be taking a look at um, GAAP, which is the Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. So with that being said, um, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles is for the United States and the United States only. The international, and if you're doing business overseas, has a completely separate rule. Okay, they have a completely set of rules and standards on reporting your financial um, statements. So with that being said, 
you do need to have people who specialize in international accounting, whether they're doing foreign, uh, foreign currency managements, whether they're doing regional accounting. So again, regional accounting could be based on the particular country that they're working in. Maybe um, country-wise could be European is their regional, right? Or um, if they're doing business in Asia, right? That's the um, East region, right? So then, once again, um, they're going to be primarily focused on um, those kind of international reporting standards and being able to manage... Um, the accounting, right? Especially for foreign currency because they're the ones that have to switch either um, whatever currency that they're collecting in the country that they're doing business in. They need to be able to manage that. Okay. And those are all of the five areas of accounting, okay? So once again, I've mentioned this yesterday. Accounting is very, very broad. Okay, so I could be a financial accountant, which I am a financial accountant. I my emphasis and concentration is in financial accounting. All right. Um, other things could be a managerial accountant, a profit manager accountant, a, um, someone, a treasury accountant who does strictly bank. Okay, there are many positions and again, accounting pretty much is in every aspect of every single thing that we can do here, right? Every organiza organization that exists here in the United States has some form of accounting. Even the IT field, in order to, you know, have IT uh, an IT company work, you need accounting, okay? Every kind of company, any type of business, whether it's nonprofit or for profit organization, government, international, they all need some kind of accounting. Okay. So, um, like I said, if you are interested in pursuing more than what is beyond this class, so again, we're only teaching the very basics, the 101 of accounting, and you are interested in other accounting fields then I would highly recommend you to go ahead and take a look and be interested in one of those um, different um, fields that you, you know, maybe potentially see yourself doing as a career, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the financial reports, okay? There are four financial reports, okay? The very first one is called the income statement, which is also known as the profit and loss, okay? So these financial reports that we see here are all familiar because we've seen them through QuickBooks, okay? This is one of the four major um, financial reports that as an accountant, you guys are going to be responsible to produce. Right, the income statement, also known as the profit and loss, which we know from QuickBooks, is to determine profitability. Right, as you can see here, what it does is it takes all of your operating revenues or just your revenues in general, right? All your income that you generate, and it's going to counter them all against all the expenses it took for you in order to operate your business. Okay. That's how you tell whether you made a profit or not, okay? And in this case, right, if my revenues exceeds my expenses, therefore, I should have a positive number, which tells me I made a profit. Now, for any reason, you had a lot more expenses versus your generated revenue, then you should have a negative number here, which, you know, means that you had a loss, okay? So once again, depending on what accounting period you are, whether it's monthly, whether it's weekly, whether it's quarterly or annually, this is your guideline to tell you, is your business doing good? And if it is, 
you should be in the positive. If you're not, you should be definitely go going into the negative. Okay? So, that is your income statement. Next one is going to be talking about the statement of equity. In this case, we are focusing on a sole proprietor. So a sole proprietor means there's only one person. So we're going to be taking a look at statement of owner's equity. Okay. Now, equity, which we'll talk about in chapter two, is determined by the value or in this case, the net worth of your company. Okay, this is what your company is worth, is your equity. Okay, now how we compute or usually determine the statement of our equity is going to be number one. What was your original investment? Okay, if you had an original investment, then your, your company is going to be worth whatever the beginning balance is. Okay, if you made a net income, and you decide to reinvest that money, the profit, into your company, it will increase the value of your company. If you have a net loss, you already know what the answer is, right? That means you're going to decrease the value of your company because the company is responsible to pay for the loss, okay? If you have any capital contributions, which if you invest more money into your company, you increase. If you withdraw from your company meaning taking money out, you already know. You're going to decrease the value of your company. So at the end of the day, right, the goal is that if you choose to invest more money, whether it's re reinvesting the profits or investing more of your own income or your own investment into the company, you're increasing the company. If you have a net loss or take money away from the company, you're essentially decreasing the value of your company so at the end of the day we need to make sure that whether our decision to invest or take away money we are able to calculate what my our net worth is at the end of a given accounting period okay then we're going to talk about the balance sheet okay the balance sheet lets me know the accounting equation holds true or not. So in this case, the accounting equation is going to be your total assets must equal everything that you owe, which is your liabilities, plus your net worth, okay, which is your equity. So in this case, assets equals liabilities plus equity will be your accounting equation. And this is also going to tell you where you stand in the company, okay? Making sure that everything that you own is equivalent to everything that you owe plus the net worth of your company, okay? A lot of times, a, a, lot, of, a lot of times, equity or in this case, um, they take the accounting equation and they revert it to kind of understand what the net worth is, which is going to be your total assets, minus your total liability. So everything that you own minus your everything that you owe is going to give you your net worth of your company. That's the same thing as your accounting equation of your assets equals your liabilities plus equity. Okay, same thing. Okay. Now, once again, um, the purpose of this is to, once again, to ensure the accuracy of your accounting by making sure that the accounting equation holds true. If you have a discrepancy here, then you can you already figured out that there, that you're missing either something that you've uh, journalized incorrectly or you have an error somewhere in your assets or your liabilities, right? The equity is going to come from your previous statement, which is your owner's equity, okay? Last but not least is going to be the statement of cash flow, okay? This, okay, so there's two ways that you can interpret this, right? First way to interpret it is, it's going to be um, if you are running an accrual type of a business, right? You're going to convert into a cash basis type of company, which 
we already know what that is, right? If we're managing our company based on cash and solemnly cash only, if we record a revenue, we must receive cash. If we buy something or we make an expense, we must pay money. We're strictly only cash. So anytime cash comes in, then we, we record it. Every time cash comes out, we record it. Accrual basis is, the, the, is determined by whether a service has been completed. So if I sold a product, right, I've earned my income, whether I receive money or not. If an, an expense has incurred, meaning it has been completed or happened that day when I receive a bill, whether I paid or not, I'm going to record it. So once again, if you are running an accrual type of basis, the best way to understand that is you're converting it into cash basis, okay? The second way to understand what the statement of cash flows is, how much cash is really flowing into your company and how much cash is really flowing out from your company, okay? So anything that has to deal with accounts receivable, accounts payable, anything that's a non-cash transaction, we have to convert that because it's cash we haven't received yet. So for example, our net income, right? Our net in income could include our cash sales and our credit sales. So we need to make sure how much money is actually coming in by calculating the cash that we actually received for our revenues, okay? And that's the best way to explain it, right? How much cash is are we did we actually receive from our revenues and how much cash did we actually spent to either acquire an asset or maybe um, uh, how much money we spent to do business, okay? And that's going to be determining your total cash flowing in and out from the company. And that's the statement of cash flows, okay? Any questions in regards to the four financial statements here in accounting? I'm assuming that's a no. <laughs> okay. No. So now we're going to talk about internal controls. All right. So this is very, very important because this is the reason why this happened was because of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, which stemmed from the Enron situation, right? Where, um, where the company didn't have any controls in, um, you know, conducting business, right? People can do whatever they want. And what the idea here for the Sarbanes-Oxley Act is that they're mandating at least two people to oversee a specific transaction, okay? Now, I'll give you an example, right? So as you can see, this hierarchy of people, right? This is the chain of command, right? Usually anything that is a profit manager, if they make an executive decision, they cannot get that decision approved unless someone else above them gives them the okay. So usually the vice president or the president usually will be approved of anybody that has lower management, okay? An executive decision cannot be completed unless two or more people are involved in that transaction. So this way, it prevents fraud from occurring. So that's the idea of having internal controls is that you need to have multiple people view a transaction to ensure the accuracy of accounting, but also to prevent any fraudulent measure that could happen in a company, right? You can't expect the person who's writing out your check, so HR, to be able to sign those checks off either because I can write myself a check for a billion dollars and walk away because I'm the HR. I sign my own checks. No. You can't do that, right? 
That's technically illegal because that's me frauding the company right there. So usually what happens is you have the, the HR that process the payrolls and process the paychecks, and then you have the president go through them, sign them off, and then give it back to HR to distribute to your employees. Okay? That's how the chain of command and the internal controls work. You're having not only the HR be responsible for paychecks, but you're also having the president oversee that and also validate that transaction by signing it off. Okay? So again, a transaction, for one transaction, you need two or more people to be involved with that transaction to validate to prevent any fraudulent charges from happening. Okay? And that is internal controls. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to test you primarily on um, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. This is more for ethics, which is going to be something that you do need to um, take a course in if you do end up pursuing a CPA. Okay? Because, um, again, you will be knowing all these laws and all these rules that regulate that are regulated between the federal, okay, to prevent fraudulent charges from happening. But again, this is something that you do need to know um, when you go into um, doing business for other businesses. Okay, so I'm not going to require you to know the Sarbanes Oxley Act of um, what is it, nineteen. Uh, 92, I think, something like that, 1982, Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Um, again, not going to test you on that, but the idea here is that you do need to know because this is very important, especially doing accounting, that you need to know if you are running a business, your HR cannot be the one that can sign checks, cannot be the one that's accounts receivable, accounts for payable. You, you've got to spread those um, different positions um, amongst other people. Okay. Course review. So last but not least, this is the concepts and everything that we learned in chapter one. We took a look at what the nature of a business is, right? What the five different um, business organizations are and what the key components and differences are. So once again, a sole proprietor, straightforward, one person. Partnership. Pretty straightforward. It's two people or more, but one of them is where they distribute all the responsibilities, where the other one is one person is the full operations and the other one is just a silent partner, right? Et cetera, et cetera. We also talked about the three different business activities, right? Whether you are a service provider, a person who does retail, or a person who um, manufactures a product. Right, we have the differences between the bookkeeper and the accountant. We have the definition of accounting right here, and we also talk about the five areas of accounting, okay, and the four financial statements. So once again, this is a good, good page to keep because once again, I'm not going to require you to memorize all of this information, okay. Because over time, as you practice through these stuff into your personal lives and when you go into your company, these things are going to be things that you should know at the back of your hand. But once again, um, it's, it's, it, it's a lot of material to memorize. So I don't have you, I don't require you guys to memorize any of this stuff. Um, but I do need you guys to be able to know the basics and the difference between the different co co the different business organizations and so on and so forth, okay? At least know the difference between them. So if you want to print this page out and write your notes on here, go ahead and do so, okay? And there you go. Any questions in regards to Chapter 1? No? No. Okay. Yes, let's go ahead and dive right into the chapter one exercises. So once again, 
these ones are primarily geared towards your reading, okay? And the PowerPoints that we just did, because once again, this is also a study tactic for you to use. Now, this is the only one that we're going, the, the, the chapters one through four are the only ones that are going to be more conceptual based on for the exercises, okay? Where the chapters after that, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve, are going to be more along the lines of calculation based. Meaning, we're going to take practice problems and apply them by using some forms and some stuff to practice on it, okay? These are the only ones yeah. that are going to go towards your actual reading, okay? So, let's see. Number one, what is the nature of a business? It's a basic resources. So yes. They provide goods and services. Good. What else is the nature of a business? What is the goal of all businesses? Make money. Yes. <laughs> they want to make money. Okay, good. Okay, good. Number two, what are the five types of business organizations? Sole proprietor. I don't know how to say the word. This is okay, sole uh, pro. Partnership. Yeah, oh, sorry. No worries. Sole pro pride. Yeah, yes, it's a little bit complicated. It's worship. Yeah. Partnership. Oh my gosh, I cannot type today. All right, partnership, go ahead. Corporation. Corporation, right, the big guys. Okay, corporations, what else? LLC. LLC, also known as a limited liability mm -hmm. company. And non-profit. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and give some examples of each type of business organization. So can you give me any example of a sole proprietorship? A store. Yeah, a small store, right? A small store, okay? Good, okay? It could be a family-owned restaurant. Mm -hmm. No worries. Okay. okay. What's a good example of a partnership? Um, lawyers. Lawyers. Excellent. Lawyers are a great example. It's lawyers. Okay. Lawyers are an excellent example, right? You're always going to have that, um, what, John and, John and yeah, so. something <laughs> consultants, <laughs> yeah. right? You're going to have some yeah. kind of partnership. Good. Okay. Great. What mm -hmm. about a corporation? I gave you quite a few examples. Actually, I don't think I only talked about one. I only picked on Target today. <laughs> Can you name another corporation that exists out there? Something like a casino, like MGM Resorts. MGM Resorts, yes, definitely. They are a huge corporation, good. Costco. Costco, yes, I believe so. Okay. What about a limited liability company? Like a dealership or something like that? Like, uh, I believe some dealerships are. Um, deal yeah, yeah, some General are. Motor or something like that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. 
A best indicator is if you were to look up any type of company, they're always going to have <coughs> LLC behind it. Mm -hmm. okay, they're the only ones that have LLC behind it. Okay. What about a non-profit organization? A church. Church. Good. Okay. Church. Any other ones? Goodwill. Goodwill, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Goodwill. Okay. Mm. All right, number four, what are the three types of business activities? Service companies, merchandising company, companies, and manufacturer. Uh, Good. Okay. Number five, what is accounting? The definition mm -hmm. is the systematic process of analyzing, recording, summary, reporting, reviewing, any, and interpreting financial information. Mm -hmm. Anything that has ing, right? Interpret, interpreting, analyzing, sorting, organizing, reporting, reporting. <laughs> yeah, it's all of that. Reporting, financial data, data, info, transaction, whatever one that you feel. Okay, good. Okay. Number six, what are the Five areas of accounting. Private. Mm hmm Private, which is the one that we are learning, right? Uh, CPA. CPA, also public. known as public. public. Good. Mm -hmm. Government. What was that? I don't. Uh, I don't know if I say good. The government. government. Oh, government. <laughs> Government, yes. Okay, government, good. Nonprofit. Nonprofit. Um, international. International, yes. Good. Number seven, okay, what are the four financial statements? So in this case, accounting, there's four. QuickBooks, there's only three. three. What are they? Statement. statement of income. Equity? Oh, statement of equity? I mean, statement of income. Okay. Income, yes. All right. So, in Honor, uh, income, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For honors equi equity. Mm -hmm. Equity. Shush. I don't, I don't know to speak English today. That's okay. <laughs> honors equity, good. The balance sheet. Balance sheet, yes. Statements of cash flows. Yeah, statement of cash flows. Okay, so again, um, some of these are very specific. So um, it, income statement, not statement of income, but that's okay. It's also known as profit and loss. Same thing. Um, cash flows could be just cash flows. It doesn't have to be statement of cash flows. Mm, there you go. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to move this one down real quick. Number eight, what is the difference between the bookkeeper and the accountant? So, the bookkeeping is recording the business financial transactions, mm -hmm. and the accounting is in interpreting and analyze the information. And, this, and it can do the same as the bookkeeping too. Excellent. Okay. Good. Accountant. Okay, they're the one that actually interprets the information and analyzes it. Good. Analyzes um, and book keeps business transaction. Good. Excellent. All right. All right, there you go. All right. 
there you go. We're finished with chapter one, okay? So homework for tonight is going to be to read chapter two and chapter three, okay? Because tomorrow we will have time to go through both chapters, okay? Sure. 